Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nitin Choda and welcome to this episode of Ignition Time. Today is a special day, it's a historic day, it's election day and my goal today on our channel is to help you relax, which is why I've decided to do something different today. No glasses, uh, no jacket, more of a casual look uh, to show you that I'm relaxed, I'm hopeful, I'm confident, I want you to be relaxed, hopeful and confident because the stress in this year has been absolutely unbelievable. Welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Nitin Choda. If you don't know anything about me, please check out my introductory video. You'll learn a little bit more about me. Also, if you learn something new from this video or if you get any valuable information from our channel, please subscribe, please enable notifications. That would be your vote of confidence in me and my team and that would really help out the YouTube algorithm. I'm gonna to talk to you about what Wall Street is saying about what might happen tonight. Yeah, Wall Street. Now, as you know, the stock market is going up today at the time I'm recording this video. I mean, things change quickly. But according to several advisors, several experts on Wall Street, several hedge fund managers and even economists, they believe that we are likely to see a decisive result. And here's what's more important. Regardless of the result, they feel that stimulus is actually very likely. Now, this is fascinating. In fact, I'll show you the first segment from an interview this morning on CNBC. And this interview was conducted with Ben Emmons. And Ben Emmons is with Medley Global Advisors. And he said that the big correction, the big sell-off last week was more likely a repositioning of funds, a repositioning of money, a repositioning of assets before the election. And all the things that we can expect in the future will be directly tied to future policies, which makes sense. But he was very bullish about stimulus post-election. In fact, he said the markets expect a clear outcome that is not going to be contested and the markets expect upcoming stimulus. You can start to see why the stock market is going up because the stock market is anticipating a decisive result it is anticipating an uncontested election and most importantly it is anticipating stimulus in the near future let's roll the tape and see what emmons had to say let's watch and let me know what you think vision that this election will be cleared and that there will be a, uh, a fiscal stimulus coming that narrative now has not changed really and i think just what happened last week was maybe just repositioning on ultimately an outcome where the policy will be directed at the economy and solving the pandemic. And that's co that's eventually what, what markets really care about. So, no, I don't, I'm not surprised. I think the market is, is very much uh, keen on seeing this election cleared and expecting an outcome that's not going to be too much contested anyway. So, 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 Ben, does that mean that it does not matter? It does not matter who wins this presidential election? The markets are still on a track higher because of stimulus down the line? On that part, it doesn't matter. So the stimulus part, it doesn't matter. Because if, say, President Trump does win and you have a Republican Senate, then you're going to get stimulus. If you have a Democratic win with a Senate uh, for Democrats, then it will also be stimulus. So that part, not. But I think what does, of course, matter is that President Biden will be a different president than President Trump in terms of his particular foreign policy. So I think the markets do care about that in terms of the volatility that you may see tonight, particularly in the currency market. So... I think stimulus is key for the markets, but the volatility will be there tonight. Now, in another segment, Ron Carson, the CEO of the Carson Group, was interviewed, as was Mark Zandi, a well-known economist from Moody's Analytics. And they discussed what would happen to the market, uh, the stock market, what would happen to the economy after the election, and uh, what would be the direction of the country after the outcome of the election is known. Now, here's interesting. What Carson said was, regardless of who wins, more stimulus is coming. So again, there is a general consensus emerging on Wall Street that more stimulus is indeed coming. And also keep in mind that if we have a decisive winner, if we have a definitive result as early as tonight, um, then there's going to be more encouragement for the stock market because the one thing the stock market doesn't like is uncertainty. And a lot of people believe that the stock market is an indicator of where the economy is indeed heading. Let's take a look at what Carson had to say. He said, regardless of who's winning, more stimulus is coming. Let's roll the tape. What does the Pennsylvania economy say about who could win this election? It's going to be close. Uh, the economy is struggling. Uh, the pandemic has done a lot of damage. And we've got a lot of uh, lower middle income households that are uh, reliant on uh, fiscal support. And of course, we haven't gotten any additional fiscal support from lawmakers. So uh, but despite all that, uh, you know, the stock market, as you point out, has uh, done pretty well here. Uh, so uh, high income households have done OK. But net net, you know, I, I think it's going to be a pretty close election. At least that's 
What I can see in my backyard here, uh, lots of Trump signs, lots of Biden signs, hard to just uh, based on that determine who's going to win. So I think it's going to be a pretty close election based on uh, my by just eyeing of things. Mike, uh, M- Mark, I, I think it's safe to say that that your your thoughts echo most of what most of America is thinking right now. Ron Carson, what do you think? The economy. Is it the economy that will dictate who wins this election? And if so, what does it say about the outcome? Well, I think the markets, you know, especially this morning, yesterday, are saying that they think it's going to be a clear and concisive victory here. Uh, that's what the market's saying. I agree with Mark. I think it's going to be it's going to be super close. But I think the 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 thing is, you have to figure out, regardless of who gets in office, there's going to be massive stimulus. There just is. I mean, we have uh, COVID nineteen is embedded directly in our lives every day, and companies, while some are doing okay. A lot of them are on life support. So stimulus, well, all that money will eventually find its way into financial assets. We saw it last time. We're going to see it again. So I think it has a lot less to do with what's necessarily going on in the economy short term. Because, look, if you would have followed that earlier this year, it wouldn't have worked out so well. But follow the money. Follow the stimulus. Regardless of who gets in, there's more stimulus to come. In the second segment, let's take a look at Mark Zandi from Moody's Analytics. And Zandi said, we need stimulus, but how much stimulus we get really depends on the election outcome. Keep in mind, there's consensus on Wall Street that if we have what's called as a blue wave, in other words, if former Vice President Joe Biden becomes president, and if the Democrats regain control of the Senate, in other words, we'll have uh, probably Chuck Schumer as a Senate Majority Leader and not Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, then that could lead to a large stimulus down the road. But if we have a split Congress, there may or may not be stimulus. So let's watch what Zandi had to say again. He said, we need stimulus. How much stimulus we get depends on the election outcome. Let's roll the tape. I mean, the stimulus is key, right, Mark? The the idea here that that this economy in America needs a jump start. It needs another kind of perhaps catalyst for it. Is it trillions of dollars more? Can is that what it takes to get the economy back to what it was kind of in 2019 before the pandemic hit? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, monetary policy can't really help here where the Fed's got interest rates at zero. So no more room there. Pandemic is still raging and intensifying. And, you know, I think that's going to really slow uh, the economic recovery. Uh, and so a, l- a lot of hurting people. Uh, so I do think uh, there needs to be some support, at least to the other side of the pandemic. And then once we're on the other side of the pandemic, I think the goal needs to be to get back to full employment as fast as possible. And that's going to take some additional uh, support. I-, I do think how much support we get depends critically on the election outcome. Uh, so, you know, if it's a democratic sweep, I think we get a much larger uh, fiscal support uh, package or packages uh, to, uh, to drive the economy. If it's a uh, Biden or a Trump presidency with a split Congress, then things get trickier. And, I, you know, I think we'll get some fiscal support. It just won't be quite as uh, significant. Now, in the third segment, Zandi talked about what's important in the next stimulus package. What is it that the economy needs? He talked about the importance of unemployment benefits, the importance of stimulus checks, which we all know about, the importance of extending the Paycheck Protection Program. And he said that this is it's going to be crucial to follow up all this with infrastructure spending. Because keep in mind, when we spend on infrastructure, when we sp- spend money on our roads, on our bridges, on our bridges and on essentially re-engineering aspects of our economy, that's what creates more jobs. But that does indeed require more spending and more deficit creation within the United States economy, which is already in a deficit. Let's listen to what Zandi had to say and let's roll the tape about the importance of the aspects of future stimulus. Now, Mark, if I could just follow up really quickly on that point there. If you are looking to get back to full employment, what kinds of economic policies will any candidate have to put in place that kind of get you there the fastest? Is it infrastructure? Is it more technology spending? What, what is it? Yeah, so the first package has got to be more support for the folks that are hurting, you know, unemployment, stimulus checks, PPP money for small business, airlines, helping the airlines out, so forth and so on. But uh, the next package uh, needs to be uh, things like infrastructure spending, uh, just significant support to the economy. But infrastructure spending, I think, is the best way of getting the economy back to full employment. That can provide support to uh, uh, economy uh, the, uh, regions across the country. So we've got problems uh, everywhere, and everywhere is going to need some help. 
and nothing better than infrastructure spending to help uh, all these different communities from coast to coast. And in the final segment of this interview, I think Carson said something that was very, very telling. I have talked about this being a K-shaped recovery. Individuals who can work remotely have indeed come back to where they were pre-pandemic, but individuals who are in travel, leisure, entertainment and hospitality have been impacted forever. In fact, some industries like movie theatres potentially could go out of business forever. Travel is going to take a very, very long time forever. A lot of airlines are getting desperate and are offering two-for-one deals and so on and so forth. In fact, I, I haven't travelled and I have no plans of travelling in the near future. So I think even if recreational travel resumes, I don't see business travelling getting back to normal anytime within the next couple of years at least. And what Carson said was pretty emphatic. He said a digital shift that would have taken a decade has now happened in a few months. Let's roll the tape and see what Carson had to say. All right, so Ron, with all of that in mind, how exactly do you feel the markets will kind of play out in, in 2021, given the fact that there is all this narrative around more fiscal stimulus coming down the pike? Yeah, I, I think that we've had a shift digitally that we didn't expect that we thought would take a decade, happened in a few months. So there's going to be major winners and lures, losers, be surgical. Uh, but I, I think whoever is elected, there's stimulus. And I, and I would really get your risk budget right. You know, if you're a little uneasy, don't go selling uh, equities you have large gains in. You can buy some deep out of the money puts. You can put some election protection on here regardless of who gets in. Because even if you knew the answer, I'm not so sure you're going to get the short-term volatility right. You need to sleep better. Make sure that you're taking the appropriate level of risk. That's it, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. You'll find the link in the description section below to these interviews. Please comment and let me know what you thought of this video. And also, please share this video with friends and family. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. My name is Dr. Nitin Choda with Ignition Time. If you don't know anything about me, please check out my video. You'll learn more about who I am, what my journey has been like, and why you should listen to me. We release videos at 2 p.m. East Coast time most days of the week. That's 2 p.m. Please get your cell phone out. Send a text message with the word ignition or with the word time to 70,000. That's 70000. And then you'll get added to SMS alerts list going forward. You can opt out of the SMS alerts at any point in time that you want. You can also, if you want, get added to our email alerts list. Simply go to ignitiontime.com forward slash alerts. That's ignitiontime.com forward slash alerts. And then you'll get added to our email list. Now you can opt out of the SMS list or the email email list at any point in time that you want. Just keep one thing in mind. Sometimes YouTube does not always send out notifications about new video releases on time. So if there's a simple solution. Just go to youtube.com forward slash ignition time and then you can bookmark the home page of our channel. That's youtube.com forward slash ignition time. And once you bookmark the home page of our channel, you can visit the home page at any point in time that you want so you don't miss a single video. So I think you might find that helpful so you're not dependent on YouTube notifications. Also, you can follow us on Instagram. Our Instagram handle is ignition underscore time. That's ignition underscore time. And you can also follow us if you like on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is the same, ignition underscore time. So you'll get breaking news and alerts from us on Twitter, especially on an important day like today. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Please share this video with friends and family. Please share this video so that we can help grow the community and we can get the word out about fair and balanced news. Remember one thing. For us at Ignition Time, it's not about the red or the blue. It's about the red, white and blue. I'm not Democrat. I'm not Republican. I'm American. So whatever happens today, and I think today is going to be a historic day, keep in mind that we are all Americans first and we will, we will emerge stronger from this, uh, from this unbelievable experience we've had. So um, also, you'll find a link in the description section below to all our resources so you can check out the resources on your own. And also, finally, please comment below and engage with our growing community. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Take care. Bye.